Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you a really simple and easy way to create this Gantt chart in Word. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is just change the orientation of this page to landscape. So go up to the Layout tab and go along to Orientation. Then just click Landscape. Now I'm just going to place a quick title in and then just quickly format that. Uh, let's put up a case and let's just go to the center. Then I'm going to just press my return key twice. And the reason for that is that when I insert my table, it will enable this cursor to go to the bottom of the table and for you to continue typing or inserting information if you choose to do so. So I'll just go to the align to left tab and then go to insert table now you can click and drag if you know all of the different dimensions you want and this enables you to go up to a table 10 by 8 but if your table is more than that then go down to this tab here that says insert table and here you can just simply input the number of columns and rows that you want now to make life a little bit easier and I'll show you why is if we just insert a table with the amount of rows that you would like so I'm just going to go here to 8 but I'm just going to insert two columns now the reason for that is because if I inserted let's say I wanted 32 columns I would like a larger cell on the left hand side for all the information all my tasks down the left hand side now if I insert all of those now, I've got to shift them all over, which is a really laborious task. This is a far easier way of doing it. All I need to do is just grab this central line and move it over so I've got enough space for all the tasks I want to input into these cells. Then all I need to do is to just click and drag and highlight all of these cells here. Go up to Table Layout go to split cells and because I'm going to do the months of the year I can just simply input 12 at the top for columns leave eight rows and click OK and that way we've got all of these equally spaced but not impacting on these cells here now I'm just going to highlight my table and I'm going to go to the home tab and I'm just going to check my fonts and font sizes because of course if they're too big they're not going to fit in the cells. Once I've done that I'm going to input all the information and I'm going to speed up the video whilst I do that. Once I've done that I'll teach you how to format the cells, the sizes and the heights, format the text so it's all aligned to where you want it and of course how to colour the different squares to highlight the timelines. Okay, so the first thing you could see when I was inputting these months of the year is that they've obviously nudged the column width. So there's several different ways that we can overcome this. The first is just to simply highlight this particular text, go up to the Home tab, and just reduce the size of your text. Now, that might not suit you because it doesn't look great, even if I was to go up and center it. it still might look a bit clunky for you. The next thing that you can do is just reduce the size of the word. So you can just take out sections of it. But again, that might not suit you either. So the other way to do this is, if we don't need as much space in this cell here, we can just move this line over, then highlight all of these cells here, then go to Table Layout, go to this icon here that says Distribute Columns click on that and that will distribute your columns equally. Now you can still see that there is an issue with your text up here. So the other way that we can fix that is by going up to the layout tab, going along to margins, clicking on the drop down and selecting narrow. Now this will narrow the margins of your page allowing us to drag out this final row line here. Let's just highlighted that row. If you just click on this row here and drag it out to the side, 
then go ahead and yet again highlight all of those cells. Go up to Layout and click Distribute Columns. And again, we've still got this one here. So again, you can either move this here, you can reduce the size of your margins, or you can simply reduce the size of all of your text. So if you don't want just September reduced, you can simply go ahead, go to the Home tab, and just once again reduce the size of your text. And eventually you'll find a way that you can fit all the text that you need into these cells. If there's a couple of words up here, then it doesn't matter, you can simply put them on a separate line. But there are several methods you can use to make sure your text fits nicely. So the next thing we're going to do is just to look at the alignment, because they're all lined up to the left. So what we need to do is if we highlight all of the months, go up to Layout, and go along to this section here, and this gives you all the different options that you'll need to align your text. I want to align mine to the centre of the cell vertically and to the centre of the cell horizontally. So if I just click on that, you can see all of the text has moved. Likewise, you can highlight the cells, go up to the Layout tab, and again, just select the one that you feel that suits your needs best. Now, the row heights are a little narrow for me, so in order to adjust them, you can just highlight the rows that you want. You don't have to highlight the top one. And then make sure you're on table layout here. And then go along to this tab here that says height. You can either use the up arrow, or you can just type in the dimension that you want. So if I just use the up arrow here, you can see that my cells are now increasing in height and if I want them to stretch across the entire page I can just simply keep hitting that up arrow until I'm happy. Now again you can see where the blue highlight is at the top of the cell that's where your text will appear. Now you may just want to put a colour into these cells which I'll show you shortly but you may also want to put some text in and if so you'll want to move that uh, to the centre of the cell to match these tasks here. And again, to do that, just keep this whole section highlighted and on the table layout again, just go along to this centre icon here. And you can see that now it's all centred. So if you type in one of these cells, it will be centred. And just to check at the bottom here, you can place your cursor and then you can type whatever you need and this is just taking up the text from the title so I'll just go ahead and reverse that now in terms of choosing to shade these different cells just click on the cell you want to change go up to table design and go along to this icon here that says shading. If you click on the drop down, you've got a number of different color options here. You've got some standard colors here. And of course, you've got more colors at the bottom. And this will allow you to pick any color from the color wheel. And of course, you've got different options along the top here as well. So if we just go ahead and cancel, and I'm just going to use a black for this particular cell. And then my task two, if I want to colour in three of the cells because my task is going to take three months, then I just highlight three cells, go back up to shading, and perhaps I need to choose a slightly different colour. And then I can highlight as many cells as I want to for those particular tasks. Once you've inputted all of your information, you may want to add information into these sections here. And there's two ways you can do that. The first one is to highlight all of the cells in that particular section. Then go to Table Layout or Layout here and click on this Merge icon. Once you've merged your cells, then you can go ahead and just type in your information. If you don't want to separate the cells out, then you can go up to the Insert tab, 
go across to text box, click on the drop down and select text box. Then you can just click and drag and then you can go ahead and type in your information. You can reduce the size of your text box. You can move this text box anywhere in your document. You can adjust the text, so double click inside your text box, go to the Home tab, and of course you can apply anything from this section here. I'm just going to centre that text and then just click off. So with any cell, of course you can go ahead and change the lines and the borders. If you just highlight the cell by clicking and dragging, or you can just go up to this square icon at the top. Then go to Table Design. And then this section here will allow you to do anything with your borders, whether it's change the colour, change the width of the line. So let's just say we wanted to change the outside border to a slightly thicker line. So we just go down to this tab here, click on the drop down and select the weight of our border. Then we go to borders and click outside border. And as you can see, I've now changed the weight of my outside border. If you just wanted to change the cell border, then just highlight whatever's in the cell. Again, make sure that you've selected your choices here. You may want to change the colour, so just go to pen colour and we can choose red. And then just go again to borders and select outside borders. And as you can see, it's just placed a red border around this particular cell. If you need to insert a row or a column, just click on a cell on the row or column next to one that you want to insert. Go up to layout and go along to this section here. And here you have the ability to insert rows above or below, and of course, columns to the left or the right. So if I click insert above, then you can see that I've just inserted that row there. And then I can go ahead and type in my information. And of course, all it's done is copy the row from below. And if you need to change this, highlight those three cells, go up to table design, click on the shading and select no color. And then you can go ahead and put in the shading that you need. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.